attaching it to heavy cable installed to support the ship. so that it could be made into an artificial reef about two years ago, and it's been under preparation since then. What they have is a number of holes that are drilled right at the water line, and you may be able to see the wood patches right there that when they get ready, what they're going to do is knock those wood patches off. That'll allow the water to come in, and it should go down quite quickly. Miami-Dade County's reef system, while in relatively good condition, House off Eastern Singapore approaches. Another vessel XYZ Avery was westbound towards the separation scheme on course 224, speed 18 knots. From 0745 hours, heavy ray, BC, this replies, we are going to north. After a minute again, XYZ calls. I am now one mile from you. Hyundai Discovery maintains same course and speed. A, B, C which is now on heading 348 degree, changes over to manual steering, and puts wheel hard over to port, and telegraph on stop. After half a minute, both vessels collide. The stem of A, B, C, it's number 2, wing tank, port side of X, Y, Z. Both vessels sustain severe damages. There was no human casualty, or pollution. The larger vessel tried to stop, but it was too late. Shocked by the collision, the crews of both ships feared that the battered Margaret Jane might sink. We didn't feel that much, but when I see steam come out of the engine room, I knew then that we had a very serious problem. Sure enough, in only two minutes, half of the smaller ship is submerged. Most of the Margaret Jane's 18 fishermen scramble for life preservers and leap into the freezing ocean. Some aren't as fortunate. As the ship is swallowed by the ocean, it creates a whirlpool that pulls several of the helpless men under. Fortunate sailors with flotation devices resurface. The arena is in its death throes, according to one cabinet minister. The cargo ship responsible for what's been labeled New Zealand's worst ever environmental disaster is finally sinking. After months of being battered by heavy seas since it ran aground in October, it had split in two over the weekend. Salvage crews did manage to remove hundreds of containers and much of the oil aboard the vessel since it first got stuck on a reef. But floating debris aside, it was clear many containers and some oil remained. Maritime New Zealand said at least one boom has been put into place to try and keep any leaking oil from further fouling key beaches, and a wildlife response center is up and running once again to care for birds that may need rescuing. Volunteers will be out Wednesday looking for birds in trouble, and authorities are contacting people willing to help clean the shoreline as well. 
As for the ship itself, the bow piled high with containers was still afloat, but listing badly. The stern went under first, with the bridge entirely submerged. The water around the wreck was dotted with brightly covered buoys, marking containers so they could be more easily recovered later. The transport minister was insisting the wreck will have to be removed completely, but despite bracing for the worst, in the short term, one official was acknowledging authorities don't know exactly what will happen next. Karen Sloan, The Associated Press. protected environmental marine just off the Tyrrhenian Sea on the coast of Tuscany. A complete analysis, the 44,600 tons of the Concordia make this the largest and most complex recovery ever attempted. The first operation will be to prevent the ship from sliding